In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of the standard normal distribution, specifically focusing on applications. These notes go along with section 6.2, and you can follow along with pages 5 and 6 of your 6.1 and 6.2 standard normal distribution and applications notes. We'll begin with a reminder about z-scores. So when we have a distribution that's not standard, meaning it's not centered at zero with a standard deviation of one, we can perform a transformation on our data to take our x values and turn them into something called a z-score. And we have a formula to do that. So a z-score should be rounded to two decimal places as a rule. And this is what happens with a z-score. We have our data, our non-standard data, and it's normal, but it's not centered around zero with a standard deviation of one. We call this axis an x-axis. We apply this formula, z equals x minus mu over sigma, to our data. And what happens is it transforms the data such that it's centered at zero. So the mean is now zero. Standard deviation is one. And our x scores are converted to what we call z scores. We're going to learn how to do problems using z scores, but also we can skip past the z score step and just simply use our calculators for some applications. And while we can often use just the data given and apply our calculator skills, it's important that you know what z-scores, understand what they are, and how to use them. As we get into these applied problems, you want to know the procedure and the expected work that I'll be looking for when I look at your assignments. First, for any of these problems, you need to sketch a normal curve. Lucky for you, they always look the same. They're bell-shaped, so you should have an x-axis drawn, a bell-shaped curve. You should have the center labeled. You should have your shading, and just make sure you're labeling what you know. Convert any relevant x values for the boundaries into corresponding z-scores. This step, we can sometimes just bypass if the example is not asking you to convert to z-scores, and I'll show you. And then you can use your calculator to find the area of the shaded region. This represents the desired probability. Write down what you used in your calculator. Now, if the problem has only an upper or a lower bound, like the diagrams that we see right here, we say that it's unbounded on the left-hand side here. You want to use a number that is approximately four standard deviations in your calculator as the missing bound. Why does that work? Well, we know from our empirical rule that 99.7% of our data falls within three standard deviations of the mean. So if you're just going four standard deviations out, you're probably good. Now, rather than calculating what's exactly four standard deviations out, a lot of times you can just pick a really, really low number for your lowest bound or a really, really high number for your upper bound. Just be mindful that it should be at least four standard deviations out. Let's look at an example. Example one, Tall Clubs International has a requirement that women must be at least 70 inches tall. Given that women have normally distributed heights and a mean of 63.8 inches and a standard deviation of 2.6 inches, we want to find the percentage of women who satisfy that height requirement. First step is to draw a normal distribution and shade the region. So our normal distribution is always taking a bell shape. And the center of this distribution is at the mean, which is 63.8. 63.8, and I'm going to label that as my mean. And the standard deviation is 2.6. I'm just going to write that to the side. Sometimes I write it under the mean, but we don't have room here. And what we want to find is the shaded region above 70 because it says that women must be at least 70 inches tall. And this is not in terms of z-scores, it's in terms of x values. So I'll label it with x. But we're asked to convert to a z-score. I'm going to show you how to do this problem with z-scores and without z-scores. Unless you're specifically told, you may choose either way. So z equals x minus mu over sigma is our formula for z-scores. So our x value is 70, our mean is 63.8, and sigma is 2.6. We'll go ahead and calculate our z score. When we round to two decimal places, we get an answer of 2.38 as our z score. Now, why don't we go ahead and see what does that make our diagram look like? I'm going to draw the same shape. I'm shading. 
my center is now at zero. My standard deviation is one because I'm in terms of z scores. This would be my z axis. And this value here is 2.38. The picture part looks exactly the same here. The only thing that's different is our labeling on our axes. So I could have really simply just erased what I had here and changed it to z scores and called it a z axis. Now, the next part is we need to find our area using the calculator. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find what is that shaded region. That shaded region we can find using z-scores and that's what we'll do first, but we can also find it without using z-scores. We'll do that second. And what we do is we do second vars in our calculator and we'll choose the second choice which is normal CDF. We'll take our lower bound, which if we're in terms of z-scores, is going to be 2.38. Our upper bound, well, we're boundless, so I'm going to choose 9, 9, 9, 9. That's at least four standard deviations out. My mean is 0, and 1 is my standard deviation. And I'll put that in my calculator. I get 0 0.0087. Now, let's pretend we hadn't converted to a z-score, and now I'm going to go ahead and use my original data. This time in my calculator, I'd type normal CDF. My lower bound would be 70. My upper bound, I can still use 9999. It's at least four standard deviations out. My mean is 63.8. And the standard deviation given is 2.6. Use second VARs and type that in. This time we'll get 0 0.0085. So to three decimal places, they're the same. Then after that, um, we're slightly off due to using the different methods, and that's okay. So our answer, the area to the right of 0 0.2, 2 is 0 0.008. So about, we can say 0.8% of all women meet the requirement. And remember, to change from a decimal to a requirement, you just, or I'm sorry, a decimal to a percent, you just move your decimal place over to the right too. And now we did this problem using z-scores and all of the work circled in purple represents z-scores. And we did this problem without using z-scores. All of the work circled in black is without using um, z-scores. You can use either method if one is not specified. It's certainly quicker to forego the z-scores, but that is up to you. The required work, you will have to show me what you put in your calculator for full credit. So I will expect to see normal CDF and the numbers that you typed in. On page six of our notes, we'll see a procedure for finding values from known areas or probabilities. So our first step is to sketch a normal distribution curve and enter the given probability or percentage in the appropriate region of the graph and identify the values being sought. So our first step, just like the other problems, was we're going to draw a picture of what we're trying to find. And you can see here, we have some calculator skills listed for us. We have find the area under any normal curve between two limits. That's what we just practiced on the previous page. But now we have a new skill. We are going to find the value of x that bounds an area to its left. So instead of knowing our x values, what we're going to know is the area. So when you know an area and you want to find the corresponding x values, you use something called inverse norm. And we go to second vars to find that, and it's just the next item, number three. What we need to know is the area to the left, the mean, and the standard deviation. I'm going to highly recommend using our technology to do this. So while you see here, steps two and three, say use your calculator or the A2 table to identify the corresponding z scores, we're going to use our calculator. What that means is step three, unless you're asked specifically to convert um, from a z-score to an x value or vice versa, you can skip step three because we're going to focus on using the technology and save some time. And it says refer to your sketch to verify that our solution makes sense in the context of the graph and in the context of the problem. So we're going to draw a picture, use our calculator, check our answer. Let's look at another example. This time it'll have to do with the heights of men instead. 
Example two, when designing aircraft cabins, what ceiling height will allow 95% of men to stand without bumping their heads? Men's heights are normally distributed with a mean of 69.5 inches and a standard deviation of 2.4 inches. Whenever I read a problem, I like to write down the important information so that I have it right there in front of me. So what we need to do first is draw and label a diagram. So it's a normal distribution, so it has that bell shape to it. I'm going to leave everything in terms of X, so I'll write X right here. The mean's in the middle, 69.5. And you can even label that mean if you have enough space. And what we're trying to figure out is what height will allow 95% of men to stand without bumping their heads. So I can shade in 95% of this diagram. So what I've shaded in right here, all everything to the left of this right there, that X value, is 0.95. So now I'm going to use my calculator to find the corresponding x value. I'm going to type in second bars, and then I'm going to select inverse norm of the area, 0.95, the mean of the problem, which is 69.5, and the standard deviation of 2.4. Let's go ahead and do that together. We'll type second bars. We'll select three because that's inverse norm. So you can either scroll down to three and press enter or just select the number three. The area under the curve that we know is 0.95. It's always a number from zero to one. The mean for this problem is 69.5. And the standard deviation is 2.4. Now most of us on our calculators can only find the area to the left. But some of you might have the option of selecting a tail. And I'm trying to find an area to the left because that's what's shaded. So I'm going to select left. If you don't have that tail option, don't worry about it. And then you'll press enter. And we get 73.448. Because our calculations generally go out one decimal place more than our original data, I'm going to say the answer is 73. 0.45 inches. And when doing this problem, the work that would be required of you would to be to have this diagram listed, and then you should also have the statement you put in your calculator. Inverse norm, open parentheses, 0.95 comma 69.5 comma 2.4, and then the number that you got. Remember, you must show all applicable work in order to earn full credit. So in addition to just your answer here with units, you need to have the circled and highlighted work that's listed.